Paul, for now, thanks very much indeed. In fact, much has been made this week of what a golden opportunity the Games are for British business. David Cameron is especially keen that firms cash in on the fact that the eyes of the world are on the UK. Well, with me to talk about that in more detail is James Ashton. He's the city editor at the... He's a columnist at The Independent and a city editor at The Evening Standard. Am I right in saying that? Goodness me, so many titles. How do you fit them all in? <laughs> I, you need a pay rise. And Sue Turpilovsky, London Policy Chairman of the Federation of Small Businesses. Thank you both for joining us here on Sky News this afternoon. Ladies first, of course. We were chatting about uh, the Olympics earlier on to um, people that were involved with tourism with the Olympics, and they were saying there's always a slump after the Olympic Games. That is right. We've done a lot of research with the Federation of Small Businesses and that's why we're urging the government not to turn everything off on September the 10th and actually take the legacy forward to make sure we really work here in London to make it not happen here as it has in Sydney and other places. So we really are urging the government to say, let's take the legacy forward. It's great. All the eyes are on us now. We've got a golden opportunity to really make the London scene and we're back in the mayor on the 2020 plan. OK, so like the London equivalent of the Blackpool Illuminations, perhaps, extending the season for as long as you can. Wear whichever hat you like, James. What do you think? Yeah, I think, you know, I think there's uh, the, the chief execs of the big companies that I've talked to, I mean, there are, there, there are no sour grapes. Everyone says that it's far better that, that London has this than, say, Frankfurt or Paris or wherever else. And, and I think we are doing all we can to, um, uh, you know, to, to capitalise on it. The Prime Minister said yesterday at the investment conference that uh, uh, some people thought it was grubby to mix money and diplomacy. Um, but I think, you know, mixing, you know, mixing sport and money is something we have to do over the next few weeks. It's about creating the business legacy as well as the sports legacy. Absolutely. But what does it mean for small businesses, sir, at least in the short term? We've heard from a lot of small businesses, even if you sort of reduce that down to taxi drivers who found it so hard leading up to the Olympics. It has been, but overall, from our survey that we've just done of our members, 65% said that they think it's going to be good long term from UK PLC, and that's the most important thing. So I think what we need to do is harness the best that we can out of it. Most businesses that are a service business, it's going to be business as usual. The message we want to get across to everybody is that London is still working. We're still working exactly the same way we were before the Olympics. We'll be working the same way after the Olympics. And London's resilient. We are fantastic people here in London and we'll just get on and do the job. How long will it take, though, James, to recover? Because, again, I was speaking to the tourism chiefs and they were saying it could take at least two years. Even Sydney, that bounced back quite quickly, took them two years to get out of the hole after the Olympics. I think, you, well, I think the, 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 the test is as soon as the Games have gone, is to really capitalise on their legacy and see who we can get uh, who like the look of London when they saw it on the telly this year and will actually come um, you know, to visit next year and the year after. I mean, is it, so are we just talking about tourism or are we talking about business? It's two things. It's tourism and trade. I think on the tourism side, um, you know, we're, we're, you know, a lot of the business leaders are going you know, out to really sell themselves. There's a lot more the government can do. There's, 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 uh, the visa system, for example, for tourists could be made a lot easier. There's still a lot more Chinese tourists going to Germany than Britain, for example. So we need to make changes Why around that. that. It, uh, it's, um, it's because uh, Britain isn't part of the Schengen Agreement. It means that um, if you're a uh, Chinese tourist looking to do Europe in one trip, um, you, can, you can take one visa out, but you get you around the whole of the rest of Europe, and then you have to do a whole other set of paperwork that gets you around the UK. And that piece of paperwork is actually quite uh, long-winded, and uh, you've got to go to a consul consulate and all sorts of stuff. And I mean, also, there's more flights, on, isn't there? Mm. There's far more flights from Germany to China than there is from the UK to China. And that's the problem. We need to really look at our inf infrastructure for the airport as well. Mm. But I think the broader point is on the trade side is, first of all, to all the people who are here to watch the Games, is to make sure that they, they, um, they leave you know, realising that London is, is, not, uh, you know, is, is a lot more modern than the impression they had when they arrive and that it's somewhere they can, they can spend the money. The three big questions yesterday at the, um, to the Prime Minister at the investment conference were around uh, visas, tax and the airport. And um, I think the tax system is probably OK. The visas, uh, a lot more can be done on. And then they've just, they've just delayed the, um, any sort of progress on the airport, which is something ask really about important the airport, for business. So what do you think? I mean, do we need another runway at Heathrow? Easy for us to stand here and say yes, as far as trade and uh, tourism is concerned, but not if you're living under the flight path. No, I think what we need to do is really strategically look at what's going to be best for London and how can we actually service our infrastructure regarding airports. So what we're saying is let's have an all-party, everybody sign up to a good, honest... Street, possibly anywhere. We need to look at all the options. We need proper, sound, economic cases for all of them, put them on the table and then get all-party consensus of whatever we think is the best option for London. Everybody sign up to it and everybody back it. Yeah, a, de a decision. You know, to you know, to delay it for before the games is is, is a bad sign, and to um, 
you know, I, th I think it very odd that you can have a consultation on this issue without factoring in a third runway, regardless of what the manifesto pledge was. Where's the most money coming from into the UK at the moment, and where do we want it to come from? At the moment, for the small businesses uh, with the Olympics, obviously it's consumer-facing things, people like restaurants, bars. If you looked around um, London yesterday, it was absolutely heaving. It was a fantastic party mm. atmosphere. Restaurants were full, it was buzzing. London was at its prime, and I think that's at the moment where it's coming from. Long term, I think it's still going to be our service economy that's going to have an awful big part to play in our infrastructure. Yeah, I mean, long, long term, it's, it's sort of a two-way two thing. It's to, get the, it's to get the overseas money in to, to help our infrastructure because, you know, frankly, we haven't got the money to build the next rail link and the next, um, uh, you know, the next bridge and that sort of thing. And then also it's to, you know, I've been to lots of things this week where you have overseas entrepreneurs mixing with, you know, British entrepreneurs, you know, sharing ideas, other things that joint ventures, things that can be, you know, there are still things that Britain does an awful lot better than, um, you know, China, Brazil and India. We a joint venture behind us, though, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, a lot of the, a lot of the engineering on that is um, is British. So Indeed, those so. are the. It's, it's about how we export our ideas as much as um, you know, as much as our widgets. A bit of Qatari cash in there as yeah. well, though I believe. It's great to talk to you, James. Thank you Thanks both very much, very much Thank indeed. Much. Thanks a lot. Um, still to come, live from central London for you this afternoon, we'll be hearing from Nick Powell at the Olympic Park. We're just over four and a half hours away from the official opening ceremony of London 2012. The Everest half price sale is now on with 50% off every window and door in our signature range. There's 50% off UPVC and casement windows, 50% off aluminium and timber windows. There's even 50% off our entrance doors and bifolding doors. So book your no obligation appointment today on 0800 